Hi, I'm Mark. This is my May review for Capricorn Sun sign and Capricorn Rising. Uh, this month we have three planets turning retrograde. We have our first eclipse uh, of the year and we have uh, a couple of tricky aspects that we need to handle carefully. Now, to start with, we have Pluto retrograde on the first. Now, when a planet's retrograde, the energy turns inward, but it does give us an opportunity to work with that energy. And the uh, lesson to be learned with Pluto in the first house retrograde is um, to look at your behaviour patterns and see the ones that are causing you pain or problems. And then take the opportunity to get you to know yourself better and then you can correct those problems. Also on the first, Venus makes a conjunction with the Black Moon Lilith and this is in your fifth house. This is the house of love. So this is an opportunity now to meet someone new if you're not in a relationship. If you are in a relationship, it can be a very exciting and passionate time. Also, this could be beneficial for you on the creative side because this is the house of creativity. So this could be uh, new ways of expressing yourself creatively that come through here. On the second, there's one of those tricky aspects that uh, you need to deal with. Um, many astrologers would say that this is a uh, definitely an unlucky or difficult aspect, uh, but it's not. It just brings up issues that you'd probably rather not face. Now, the aspect is the Sun making a square to Saturn. Saturn's in your second house of finances and possessions, so there could be something that comes up, an event that comes up that highlights an issue in this area. Now, uh, Mercury makes an aspect of Pluto on the same day, so you'll be quite capable of looking at deeper issues. But we have a problem. Uh, Neptune makes an aspect of the Venus uh, Black Moon conjunction, so this will incline you to want to uh, bury your head in the sand or escape from any issues that come up. So be brave and face those issues. On the third, Mercury makes a square to Jupiter, um, but you're not going to get the advantage of this because both planets are at 29 degrees, and at this degree they're very much weakened, so uh, you'll be hard pushed to get much out of it. But on the fourth, Mercury moves into uh, the sixth house and Gemini, and gradually over the month the emphasis will change from the fifth to the sixth house. Um, on the sixth, uh, there's a conjunction between the Sun and Cupido, who is Cupid, in the fifth house of love. So on a day like this, you could be magically drawn to someone if you're not already in a relationship. It's also good for passion because Venus makes a, a tri aspect to Pluto, so this intensifies the desires. On the 8th, uh, Venus replicates Mercury and makes a square to Jupiter, but again that's still at 29 degrees, so it'll be pretty ineffective. And then Venus pops into uh, Gemini on the 9th. On the 10th we have another tricky aspect we're talking about, uh, this time it's Mars make it a, a sextile to um, Uranus. Uranus in your 5th house, Mars in the 7th house. Now you'll be a little bit um, out of sorts for a few days, you might be restless, you might be bored with things or fed up with things. Um, and unfortunately this could be within relationships because Mars is in the 7th or it could be with uh, children. If you have children you may be a little bit restless with them. Um, or maybe your creativity, because this is the house of creativity, the fifth house. So you could be bored with your um, current situation, um, that you're not being creative enough, or you're not making enough uh, headway, I think. So there's a lot of changes that you can make to uh, put things right. Because uh, Mercury makes a conjunction in your sixth house uh, with uh, the North Node. So this is excellent, because this means you can put changes into place. You can put a strategy or a plan in place that will that will make things run smoother. Um, the North Node is our way forward, our spiritual way forward, so this is a good time to get to grips with this. And we'll have Venus and the Sun making the same aspect later in the month, so you can work with this energy. Also on the 10th there's two uh, aspects to Chiron, one from Mercury and one from Mars. Now this um, helps with the uh, conjunction with the North Node that Mercury is making because you'll be able to get insights, you'll be able to get um, new uh, hunches or, or ideas coming through that you can um, change your awareness with. You need to move from an old awareness into a new and more dynamic awareness moving forward in the future. 
<laughs> On the 11th, we have a new moon. The new moon is in your fifth house in Taurus. The new moon in the fifth house is about creativity, about your creative juices flowing. You want to see how you and your creativity impacts on the world around you and you'll want feedback from others as to how it affects them. Uh, romantic and love interests are highlighted as well as enjoying yourself and having some fun. Um, now, this is a time when you can build your confidence up and you can um, be bold and, and very expressive. In Taurus, it's about um, getting connection with the earth, with Mother Earth. So it's a good time to be outdoors and to uh, involve yourself in something that, that is connected with nature to get that connection. Also at the time of the new moon, um, the sun and moon makes a conjunction with the black moon Lilith. Now here, you just need to be aware, you need to be aware because there could be something come up from the unconscious, some emotions that come up that are related to some fear, uh, deep rooted fear from the past. So just be aware of this and see what it is and then hopefully you can deal with that. Then on the 12th, um, there's an aspect between the sun and Neptune, which can be a very creative one. Um, it's good for your imagination because Neptune's in your third house. This is a time when you could uh, do anything like writing poetry, writing music, anything that connects the intellect and the imagination together. It's not a good time for making hard and fast decisions. There's your mind to be a little bit dreamy and, and you'll be prone to a bit more um, escapism than normal. Then on the 16th, it's a day for getting on and achieving things because the sun makes a positive aspect of Pluto is in your first house. So this is a time when you can make changes, you can make personal changes, whether you want to change your style or your look or how you uh, express and deal with people, that's up to you, but it's a great day for making those changes. Between the 17th and the 19th, Venus makes three uh, positive aspects. First, it's a conjunction with the North Node. Now, Mercury's already made this aspect, so this is a continuation. Um, this will, again, open up your path a little bit more. You better see clearly the way ahead, and this will affect your daily routines. So there could be insights here. There could be some desires that you want to change certain things, maybe make your daily life more pleasant, uh, your surroundings more pleasant. This is a good time to get in touch with those. Then on the 18th, there's a, an aspect to uh, Chiron in your fourth house. So here a wound from the past may resurface. So you'll be able to see what it is, you'll be able to work with that and perhaps uh, heal that. Um, could also be a connection with the home as well, being in the fourth house. Then on the 19th, there's a trine to Saturn. Saturn's in the second house. Now Venus um, and Saturn, uh, together there's a good time to discuss finances. It's a good time to put a plan into operation that will um, bring your um, desires closer to um, happening. On the 21st the Sun moves into uh, the sixth house and Gemini and Jupiter moves into uh, Pisces and the third house. These two make a square aspect and this is at maximum um, power now because they're both at 0 degrees and the planet at 0 degrees is at its strongest. So what can we expect? Well, um, Jupiter's in your third house of the mind so the mind will be crying out for um, learning and expansion. Um, the sun is in the sixth house so it's your daily routines that can be um, affected here. Health, diet, exercise, your work routines, these can all benefit from this aspect. There will be opportunities abound with the Jupiter and the Sun um, in this position. So the one thing to be careful of, uh, Neptune and Mercury make uh, uh, an aspect and again Mercury's in that third house. So you just need to watch and be very careful of details that you don't overlook things. Then on the 23rd uh, of our second planet going retrograde and this time it's Saturn. Saturn's in your second house. Now the lesson here to be learned is to put more effort and energy into uh, uh, achieve material security so that you feel a lot happier with, with what you have. It's also a good time to reassess value systems as well. 
the 25th there's a conjunction between Neptune and Pallas. Now Pallas brings strategy and wisdom um, to Neptune's creativity and imagination. This is happening in your third house. So your mind will be very creative, but very good at planning, very good at solving problems and, and looking at strategies. So this is a good time to put any long-term uh, uh, things into effect. And also um, in your local area, it's good to look at your local area in your neighborhood and see where problems can be solved around that area. Uh, this aspect lasts the 4th of June, but there's a couple of days uh, between 26th and 29th when there's a square from Venus and a square from um, Mercury. So these could be days when there's blockages or hold-ups or little frustrations that you need to overcome. On the 26th we have our first eclipse of the year and this is a full moon in uh, Sagittarius. Uh, this is a lunar eclipse um, and this is in your 12th house. Now, the full moon in your 12th house um, will relate to you want to take some downtime. You've been very busy lately, there's been a lot going on. You need to take a step back and retreat and to think things through properly. Um, and you need to discover what might be going on underneath the surface because with this uh, eclipse, it's part of the Saras 5 North series and this is uh, very much uh, an unusual series of eclipses and are related to um, insights, flashes of insights, um, dreams, uh, messages coming through from your unconscious uh, or from um, visualizations. So this is when you need to take a little bit of time out and see what comes up and think about things quite deeply and carefully and then you'll get insights as to what needs changing. Also it's a very important full moon because it, the Sun conjuncts uh, the North Node. Now we've had Mercury, we've had Venus and now it's the Sun that conjuncts the North Node. So this is a very fated month. This is all to do with your destiny and your way forward. So you need to um, go deep within and find out what needs to be changed or, or what, what you've been putting up with for a long time that, that you can't put up with any longer. That needs changing so you can move forward in the right direction. Now this new uh, full moon, sorry, is in Sagittarius. So it's uh, all about freedom as well. Freedom to expand and grow in the way that you feel is right for you. On the 29th, we have Mars making a positive aspect to the Neptune Palace conjunction we spoke about on the 25th that lasts till June. Now, Mars will add his uh, power, his physical prowess into this aspect, so this will benefit you even more. And it's also um, good because Mars is in the seventh house. This is when you can involve other people if you have any problems or, or projects going on. Uh, that you need solving or sorting, then you can involve other people and two heads are always better than one. Uh, also on the 29th we have a third planet going retrograde, this time it's Mercury. Mercury uh, is in your sixth house, so the lessons learned here is about service to others. This is to be patient with others and to um, understand where and how you can help other people. Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed my review. If you'd like more, please subscribe. If you'd like to leave a message, I'd love to hear from you.